with C. So we're still talking about functions of, of two variables. As the second main topic of the class, uh, the process time occurs, and there will be more. So one, two, and there, there will be more. And uh, uh, so that's, that's a rough illustration of what can happen. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, what can happen, uh, and that is uh, the uh, um, uh, to a function of two variables. Uh, so that's what they, what they might, where they might come from. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, functions uh, representing uh, a quantity that uh, depends on two other quantities. That, that's roughly uh, roughly what it is. Uh, whether it is a natural uh, occurrence or you, you're, it, it, it is guided by decision making or, or vice versa. Okay, so in this particular case, we look at uh, uh, the prices of those two commodities, and uh, we we are assigned uh, at will the price for the uh, for, for the bread that we're making. Okay, so uh, so then we made up some 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 hypothetical uh, dependencies of the uh, of the of the price of the bread on the price of the wheat uh, x and uh, uh, sugar. Um, y. Okay. So uh, then we computed a few values, just as uh, just as always we do, and we created a, um, a graph diagram, which is, as you can see, that is not very does not very revealing, and even though we have very little uh, data, uh, as you can see, we have uh, nine data points. Okay. So um, so that's why we turn to toward uh, uh, toward Excel. And we do exactly the same thing with exactly the same function. Uh, and uh, what we did yesterday uh, was simply the uh, just the x's and y's. So x happened to be the blue line horizontally, point 0.1 at a time, okay, from uh, 0 to 1.5. And for y vertically, to well, we have more room, so I, I went to 2.5. Okay. Um, okay. So so now the next step is to actually uh, executing. The formula, which is which is right there, it's almost invisible. It's right here. Okay, so two x plus y plus one. So I will be picking. Okay, so let's see. So if I am right here, suppose suppose I'm here. Uh, Excel actually highlights the corresponding column and corresponding uh, row, so I know where where I'm going to be picking uh, my x's. So I will be picking the the uh, x will be 0.5, and if I'm right here, I have my y will be say 0.6. Okay, so so every time, every every uh, every entry will be make, making one reference to the value above, all the way above to the uh, to the uh, first row, and all the way to the left to the first column. Okay, so so it is a little bit of a challenge of how to write that formula, but it's really one what you do once. Slightly more challenging than the one with, that we did with the uh, with the primary curves. Okay, so select slightly more work, but otherwise not too hard. So equal, uh, so once again, 2x plus 2x plus y, 2x plus y plus 1. Okay, so 2 times x, I, am, I have to refer to uh, that 0 right above, uh, except I have to write it in a uh, relative, uh, ref as a relative reference. Okay, so it will be Row and it, it is half relative, half uh, uh, absolute. Okay, so the the row is absolute. So I write R one. So it has to be in the first row, right? Because I'm sorry, the second row, the second row. Oops, third row, third row. Okay, uh, third row, and the entry should be the same as the column I'm in. So, okay, R three C. That refers to the uppermost entry uh, right above. Me. Okay, uh, plus y. Can you tell? Can you tell me what y should be? How I make a reference to that zero on the left? Uh, R C two. R C two. Yes. R C two. Okay. So same row, and the column has to be number two. So uh, once again, a re a relative references are in brackets. Absolute references without brackets. So C2 means second row, R2 means, uh, R3 means third row, uh, third, R3 third row, C2 uh, second column. Okay, so we are referring to those specific row and column. Okay? Plus one. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Plus 
one. Okay, that is our uh, one entry. It will cover everything. Let me uh, spread it out. Let's see, control right, control down. Okay, so that formula has been repeated throughout. To confirm before we move on, let me confirm that the reference our, our references work out as planned. You see, right? So the reference of, of the formula here it refers to a y over there and x over over there. Okay. You missed the bottom row. Yeah, okay, so I'll just <laughs> Okay, so this is the data. This is the data. I could actually make it prettier. I could add borders so that we would separate as we have the uh, the uh, the input from output. So I put a a, 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 a row here, uh, not a row, the a border on the left, so the entry the uh, entry, uh, the input uh, column of y's is here, and uh, the rest of the right is what we're computing based on. And then similarly, I want to separate x's from, from, from z's. These are z's. These are z's. These are x. These are y's. Those are x's. These are z's. Okay, so I, once again, I click on bottom. Boom, boom. This one, border. Okay. Okay. Uh, so x's. Uh, at the top, y's at the bottom. We'll see later that actually it is better to go uh, horizontally uh, with y's and vertically uh, with x's. Because, you see why? Why x's should be actually vertically in Excel. Because, because if you turn it, then x, if, if this is x and this is y, then you turn it and you have it the way you want, x and y. Okay, as we like it to have x to the right and y vertical, so the, they have to be. And it's preferable to, to keep uh, that arrangement between x and y kept the same way as before. Okay, so that is pure data, uh, and it would be uh, nice to be able to, to have something that would, we would have done before, so visualize. How do we visualize it? And we know what it's supposed to produce. Uh, it's supposed to produce uh, a surface, it will, uh, but uh, let's, let's first take a uh, uh, well, let's once again, how many how many functions do we have here? Uh, functions of one variable. Two functions of one variable, or the oh, no. to to remind you, remember that that it came up came up yesterday. What was the answer? Yes. Six. Six. Okay. So uh, so how many here? We just say a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. So so every column and every and every row. Okay, so it could be, uh, so you have like 15 and, and 25, 40, 40 functions. So, so in other words, if we start plotting, we could roughly plot, we could, this is what I could do, this is, this is, a, this is an example of a function. Okay, so I could plot it separately as uh, x's versus z's, x's versus z's, so once again, these are all z's. I could plot it, and, and uh, uh, j just, just as a small part of it, uh, for example, um, well, why not this one? See? So that is x. Well, let's take a look at it, what, what we're looking at. So x's are on the, I believe, on the um, horizontal. Yeah. Uh, x is on the horizontal axis. And this one is z's. OK. So and, uh, and so this is a slice of our surface. So we don't have the surface yet, but we just realized that the this the surface will be made of straight lines. Okay. Uh, similarly, but slightly more complicated is to do. Uh, well, maybe I want to do the next one. It's uh, so if I choose select this. Hold on a second. Okay, select this one and that one. I'm I'm choosing the second row. Okay. So once again, I'm trying to. Well, I'm not sure it's going to work. Uh, insert. Uh, one of these. Did it work? Yeah. It's just hiding behind. Okay, so uh, so the first row we 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 are uh, use the x row twice, but the output is just as like with parameter curves almost. Uh, we have we use the two uh, the row number one, row number two to produce two uh, different functions of one variable. You can imagine that if we had more of these and we put them together, they might form. Uh, a plane. It will be a plane, but could, generally speaking, some kind of surface. 
they are incidentally, as you can see, if you look at them carefully, what do they have in common? Same slope. Same slope. Same slope, and uh, indeed, if you make a, if you take uh, lines of the same slope and put them uh, next to each other, they probably will form um, 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 uh, a surface. Okay, so similarly, we could do this. Just let's just do one. Uh, well, it is y versus z. Uh, y versus z is plotted and produces the exact same result. Well, not exactly the same same result. In fact, it will, it will look quite a bit different. Uh, here it is. Okay, so more values, different slope. So you do go this way, one slope, and, and this one is a, another slope. So the, the first two we did was the slope was, uh, well, what was the slope? The slope was these two. What's the slope? From zero to one, run. And what is the rise? Two. From one to three, from one to three. So the slope is two. For these two, the slope is two. And every time you go horizontally, there will be a bunch of uh, of, of those slopes as two. And this one is uh, the slope is one. It appears, right? Okay. So uh, so think about it. If we take these and we make twenty of them or twenty five of them, uh, they will form a plane. And then uh, and then it seems we are already done. But we can do exactly the same thing with the. Uh, with these and also arrange it like this, so it's a little bit like a uh, like a net, or I don't know what it looks like, like a wireframe, a wireframe, okay, under with, with some angle. So so this one is it is hard to combine these together uh, uh, visually because this is these are y's, they, these are again z's, but these are y's, these are x's, and these are y's. Okay, so. Um, uh, let me copy this and see and see what else we can do before we get to the surface. Well, well let's do the surface. Let's do the surface. Um, I do believe so. Let me delete this. And uh, in, and then then this is what I do. It will not supply us, Excel does not supply us with the variables. As you can see, I'm ignoring the input variables. Only this table is being um, uh, plotted, so I'm just inserting a surface. Uh, surface. Hmm. Here somewhere. That's not the surface. This is surface. Once again, this is a this is a, a Windows 10, and I'm just not well, hold on. Where are the surfaces? Anybody knows where the surfaces are? Maybe this one. 3D maps. What is that? Okay. Okay. Let's see. So, uh, so it's supposed to plot plot the 3D surface. Okay. Okay. Uh, Insert. Okay, let's do something else. Uh, my version of Windows has, Excel has surfaces, and this one doesn't seem to, to have it. Okay, let me, for a moment. Old charts, okay. Old charts, and there's a surface here somewhere. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the surface is here. The, uh, as you can see, there are 25 entries vertically, and the, this year you can see the 125 here. And then what they call series from 1 to 13, it is, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure why from 13, well, 13 maybe. Okay, so and that's the horizontal one. Uh, so it is certainly a straight uh, surface, uh, straight, so it's not an, any, there's not any curvature. And uh, we, whenever we want, uh, there is also, a possibility for something that I don't see again, but uh, um, uh, there is a three uh, ability to three-dimensionally uh, 
uh, move it around. So turn it around so you can see from different angles, and once again, I'm not seeing it. It, it might just be if you grab the picture. <coughs> yeah. The cursor, that might work. Maybe this one. It, it is here somewhere. I just, this is, no, that's not the right tape. It's not design. Switch, select, move. Okay, well, uh, so you see this is a plane, right? Okay, so uh, in fact I have, I have a picture somewhere else which is um, uh, slightly more interesting. So we could certainly... Um, okay, so that, that would uh, what it might look like. Exactly the same construction, uh, more complicated uh, data uh, produces more complicated uh, surface. Okay, so, but there is one more before, before we move on. Uh, we are, I'm not done with visualization. There is the third way to visualize uh, the, the data, which is uh, three-dimensional, right? So there are uh, X, Y, and Z, um, and uh, they are visualized by a surface. So for each X and Y, we plot, uh, you, you could still plot some kind of a bars, the, the way I tried to do it over here, attach, like in Excel style, attach a bar or, or a column of some kind, uh, the height of which is determined by the value that we have here. When they are negative, well, they will be below the XY plane, but otherwise it's, it will, they will still form uh, some kind of surface. Okay? But there is, a, there is one, more to, one more way to visualize it. Can you think of another way without charts? Well, I mean, maybe if you haven't done Excel, then you, you probably don't know. But the answer is, is coloring. Coloring depending on the values. Okay? So, um, uh, a word that might be familiar is, uh, uh, so in Excel it's called conditional formatting, but uh, uh, elsewhere you could think about, well, here it is. Okay? So, as you can see, the red ones are high values, blue ones are lower values. And you can see that the, uh, it, is, it is an extra, uh, extra um, information is here, I suppose. Well, first of all, it's easy, it's slightly easier to, to understand what's going on. You can see how, how the growth is going kind of diagonally, right? So you, you, that is indeed the, the slope of the, you can actually ask yourself when we're done and do it, which is, what is the direction of the fastest growth? Upper, this diagonal to this diagonal. Wait, which one? From, from zero to zero to the lowest. To, to what? To, to the uh, lower. Yeah. yeah. Well, roughly. I would, I would uh, roughly diagonally, but we, you cannot tell exactly what the angle is you know, from the data. You have to actually analyze the, uh, the, the function, the formula, in order to, to realize what it is. But it's definitely not, uh, well, not this. I mean, it's growing, but not as fast as if you go diagonally. Once again, you go horizontally. Once again, it's, there is a growth but not as fast as if you go diagonally. And there is one perfect direction which it gives you the highest growth. Okay, that is certainly, if that is the case, it gives us, gives us uh, uh, the ability to do uh, optimization problems. Just like in calculus one, we did it with, uh, with derivatives, and here we will have, we'll need the, the exact same tools in order to, uh, to say, suppose we're climbing a, a mountain, and we want to find the, the path that is the fastest to, to the mountain that that is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, direction of the fastest growth. Alternatively, it is the direction at which the water will flow from the down from the, um, from the top, top of the mountain. So as you can see, this is, it will be flowing th that way. So the, those directions also are, are found with, uh, with, uh, uh, with derivatives. Okay, uh, one more thing. Well, also you can you can see uh, what is the importance of this direction. That's where the height is uh, the same. The height is the same, right? So there is no growth. Uh, you remember maps. Uh, this is a kind of a map of uh, if you, especially if you maybe you make it really small and you don't see any numbers anymore. 
Okay, so you can see how it progresses from blue to uh, to red. Uh, if you think about actual maps in actual uh, altitudes, you know what I'm talking about. The topographical, map. topographical maps they're usually not red and blue, but rather say green and well, let's say green and so the green for the highest points. No, wait a minute. The green for the lowest point and maybe brown for the highest point. I, I'm not sure what, what they, they prefer to choose. Uh, so, uh, but here, how about this, not this one, this one. So the green one is the uh, lowest point and the mountains are brown usually, a uh, brown or yellow. Okay, so once again, it is. it looks like and that where it comes from is the uh, topographic maps. And what I was just talking about is uh, um, they are represented often not with colors, but with curves. Remember those curves on topograph maps? They give you the uh, fixed altitude. So if you go along that line, you are not climbing nor you're going down. Okay, so yeah, they usually go around the mountain, there is such a line, and they are, they're, they're made a curve like that. They're called level curves, and once again, that's another thing that we have to learn how to, uh, to, uh, to find. Okay, so in this we are still doing, we, we're just visualizing, we're trying to understand the meaning of, of functions of two variables. And uh, so for the time being, uh, this is it. So without calculus, we really cannot, cannot do much, as, but you can see what we can and want to do uh, with, uh, with functions like that. Um, before we, uh, we get, we'll do a little bit of that um, uh, soon, but uh, before we do that, let's, let's uh, Let's now uh, go back and take a look at these two examples that we looked at combined. So remember the previous example from yesterday uh, and the day before was the same two commodities, wheat and sugar, uh, but they as function of time. Okay, and then now a separate example. We saw we, we treated these two entirely separately. Uh, wheat and sugar, and now they are not uh, dependent variables anymore. They are independent variables, right? So the independence variables, by the way, you can see it right here, how uh, it is shown by the, our ability to freely change x, and we can freely change y. And we, that, that's the two degrees of freedom, and that's why uh, our domain is, uh, of our new function is, in fact, uh, a whole uh, rectangle. Okay, so, so that's the independence. When you have one, only one independent variable, you move, move, you can move with one degree of freedom. You move moving left or right. Okay. When you have two, uh, you move uh, freely along along the uh, along the uh, right angle. If you have three, you'll have a three-dimensional space and so on. Okay. So uh, so this is I want to continue with this example to make some sense of what we want to what we want to see here. And that is well, maybe you can tell me what. Uh, Okay, so, so you see what I'm talking about? So time, 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 time. So time uh, t, okay, so this is the, I'm talking about example one, and then we had a price of, of, of wheat, x, and price of, of sugar, y, okay? And we have two functions, remember f and g, and we remember the formulas, okay? And then, so that's example one. And now example two, uh, let me take a blue color, will be like this. Okay, so the, we're still using the price of wheat and, 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 and sugar, x and y, but this time we're producing with our function, which I think I called F capital. I think so, yeah. Uh, and we are producing uh, producing price of bread. Okay, so this is, this is example two. 
So we combine them together. So do you see what, uh, what uh, this produces? What the point of this uh, combination? That's right. So if you go all the way from left to right, you will get from t to uh, to z, and wheat and sugar will, will disappear. So, so somebody remember how how it happened? So uh, uh, combined together, there is a, there is a uh, somewhere uh, wheat and sugar are traded, and the that information is, is somewhere is is uh, is uh, uh, recorded in that uh, as a function of time two functions of time, and then some uh, bread maker uh, looking at those prices uh, every day produces, according to his formula, not only to himself, uh, the price of his bread, okay? And in the meantime, in the meantime, somebody standing outside of the, uh, of the uh, bakery might create this function, which is simply the price of bread as a function of time. So suppose maybe changing every day, okay? So, so maybe time probably makes sense to uh, in days maybe. Okay, and where does it come from? Then that, that's the uh, uh, um, third party observer, that's what he sees. He sees the, uh, the development of the price of bread uh, in time, okay, up and down and so on. Uh, but what is in reality happening, happening is the decision making is uh, of bread, 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 bread maker is combined with the uh, whatever the trading of the of the two commodities on the left uh, produces, and uh, uh, if we look carefully at uh, at what we have, uh, so what would you call this? So we combine the two two functions, and the right word for it is what? Composition. Composition. Right. So composition. So that's why the composition, indeed. So the two functions apply consecutively. Okay. So they are there. We you have seen a lot of them in e calculus one, especially. Um, uh, you can certainly well. Any you remember any examples of compositions? Of, I mean, of, look, can you think of real life real life uh, compositions? Of functions of one variable. So from calculus one point of studying comp compositions. Why? Why is it important? It's important because they, I mean, they, they occur all the time. Oh, the, the, yeah, but they, if it's all the time, then it should be easy to, to find an example. Right? I mean, I mean, it's certainly when you have an example in front of you of uh, functions of two variables, uh, make it a function of one variable, you're done. Okay, so price of time of wheat as a function of time. Suppose your bread does not use any sugar, and then there you there you have your, you have your composition. Uh, if you if you want uh, other examples, it's uh, typically what, what you see any kind of conversions uh, conversions of of say uh, you convert miles to to feet and then you convert feet to inches. Composition converts miles to inches. You convert uh, dollars to pounds and pounds to euros. As a result, you, you have com composition will be conversion from uh, dollars to euros. Okay, that's that's the, how composition occur. Uh, clothing, shoe sizes in different countries or uh, shoes, uh, any temperature Celsius to Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Okay, once again, combine you convert the Fahrenheit uh, Celsius to to, uh, to Kelvin and so on. Okay, so all the, these are compositions are that are very um, they really need occur uh, every day all, 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 all the time. And um, uh, certainly the formula that you have seen in calculus one, and you remember the, uh, the how to differentiate, how do we differentiate compositions? The derivative of the inside. No, I was just asking for the name. Chain. Chain. Right. Uh, right. So the compositions are uh, occur all the time, and uh, um, uh, so they will occur even more, even more now because 
uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, the compositions were slightly overshadowed in calculus one by, by algebraic operations because you can, when you deal with only one variable, uh, that variable is a number, you can add, multiply, subtract, and divide. Here it's not going to be as easy anymore because uh, once you have two dimensions, if you have x, y point, if it is a point, then you cannot multiply points. Okay, so, well, so multiplication kind of out, out of the window. You could try to add them, but multiplication is not, not a possibility. Division, try to divide points, well, one point by another point. But compositions are, uh, are another issue. They, are, they, are, they do not rely on the idea of, any, of algebra. They simply two operations carried out consecutively. Think uh, another example is the, um, uh, like, assembly line. Okay, so you you multiple procedure and you cannot proceed to the next step until you, the first previous one is is executed. And so yeah, you add different pieces to to the uh, to the car and uh, and and then uh, that that is that would be a result is the com of, of the composition of those operations gives you the the car. Okay, so it, it doesn't have to be necessarily about about numbers. And at, at this time we we will be talking about uh, points in multidimensional spaces such as x y is the point on the plane. We'll be talking about vectors, and uh, uh, so these are still algebraic uh, entities. But generally, uh, remember functions are applicable to any uh, any entities, and the compositions are applicable to any entities. In fact, just to refresh your memory, how far we can go with this, uh, just to refresh your memory, is uh, uh, with how the generality of functions, which probably you probably did not did not face that since pre-calculus. Uh, functions as functions of things other than numbers or vectors or anything else. So an uh, example that I, 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 I like is the one of, of uh, say, this is the Senate, and these are the states. Okay, and then all you have to do is just draw some arrows. And those arrows, which will be the senator, uh, hold on a second, which way do I go? Uh, yeah, uh, so the senator is, there's a correspondence between every member of the Senate with, uh, with uh, one of the states, right? So, and we just draw an arrow, so we suppose these are members, and then uh, I, I just have arrows uh, from left to right. What do this, if you can describe what those arrows should look like? What's so special about it? It's, it's one to one. Go in one direction. And they will be going from left to right. Okay. Anything else? Anything? So anything else? Can't be for two states. So one, one senator can't be for two states. Like it right. So well, states. so it is a function. Right. So you cannot have this. This is this is uh, a, 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 a not allowed. And indeed, which makes the these arrows indeed a function. This is not. This, then you cannot have two. Outputs from the same input, so this is is prohibited. That's why we can say it's a function. Can we have this? Yes. Yes. In fact, we do. We can be specific here. So, what what are we talking about? Two for every. We have exactly two because two senators per per uh, per state. So there will be always two people that are uh, with arrows pointing at the same state. Okay, and with the arrow, there is also an arrow that is approaching every single uh, single state here. So there is none, none of them is missing. Every every uh, state is presented. So we have 100 here, 50 there, roughly, and uh, and uh, a bunch of arrows. Okay, so so that's that's uh, uh, the function. You can think of how to compose it with any function. Say, I don't know. You 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 have to really have with uh, how about h? Okay, so so on average. Uh, so, uh, so that that the in other, in other, the second function could be uh, wait hold on a second I was thinking uh, about here so uh, not age but say population maybe so uh, the second function will be uh, the uh, will be <laughs> uh, will be the uh, a function from the state to its to its population size okay and then and then you can have a uh, a composition from a senate to population size. A composition of these two functions will give you uh, the population size for each senator. So I, he, he can say, or she can say, I'm representing this many people. Okay? So, so compositions are 
way more uh, important than, in fact, any kind of algebraic operations with, with functions. And they become more and more important as the nature of the entities, input and output, becomes more and more general. And we already have, have an example. So that x, y, a combination of, of two things, uh, it, is, it is a point in uh, x, y plane. So the, uh, uh, from a time number, we get a point in x, y plane. From that point x, y plane, we find the uh, number z. And the end result is actually a function is with one variable. One input, one output, just, just a number. So that, that function is, is very simple. So uh, we can actually, and it does represent the dependence of the price of bread on time, but in that particular paper. We can certainly uh, now, uh, let's carry out, let's carry it out. Uh, the, we'll carry out the, um, the, the old data is here, right? So uh, this is not this. Uh, uh, okay, uh, hold on a second. Where is my, uh, where are my comment, uh, these are my comment curves. Um, not this one. Okay, these are my two parameter curves. I, I'll take this data, uh, just these two pairs of counts, and, uh, uh, and then I apply my last function. Okay, so we have all the formulas ready, so, so let's just do it. So these, I'll take this and just copy. Uh, and copy. Okay, so this is the uh, we did the composition. Okay, uh, so okay, I will delete this. It's not on it, but uh, the data is all here. So the first function, the second function, the first one is the uh, the. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the first one is the, uh, the wheat and the second is the sugar. Now, I want to combine these two into one, okay? So, so then it would reflect uh, what the picture here. So from one input time, so we're still talking about example number one, but I, wanna, I don't want to think about this anymore as if we have one single, uh, two functions. It seems we have two functions. Let's we make one function with one input t and the output is a pair x, y. Okay, so so in other words, how do I combine these two columns? I already have t, I have x, I'll, I'll add y over here. Okay, and so I'll just copy what's happening over here, that second formula, uh, and put it put it next to, to x. So then we just read it horizontally. From t, I have x, y. In other t, I have two x, y's. Okay, so the formula is is here. Oh, Dad, remember that, that discussion from yesterday? Do you remember? Turns out, it, it, I never knew that Excel actually does not understand the minus. It thinks the minus sign comes after. So it takes negative and then it squares it. Even though it's minus, minus, 3 squared. Oh, let me do it. So if I type here, uh, equal minus 3 squared. You see the problem? Minus 3, no parentheses, minus 3 squared. And Excel thinks it's, it's 9. So, so, you, you work. Um, okay, so, uh, so I'll copy, I'll just, oops, I'll just copy the formulas. The formula. I copy the formula, uh, which we were heard to make correct. So now I'll just copy it over here and make sure that it, it worked correctly. Uh, okay, I'll move it. The reference is to T. Okay, so um, okay. So as you can see, I'm spreading it. Oops. Okay, so uh, so t is the input, x the output. Look 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 the reference. Okay, the, the blue square is the input into the formula, and here we have the same same story. Okay, also it refers to uh, the same the same uh, uh, the same column. Okay, so that way we don't need this anymore. We combine those two two functions of one variable into into one 
parametric curve. So this is a parametric curve now, now uh, that's being combined. So because the input is the same, I don't have to repeat the, the same column twice. I have it, I have it right there. Okay, and I have x and y. And now I can plot it just, just for uh, see to show you that we, we can we, we can. I can plot it by once again plotting the uh, last time. Okay, so uh, that's my parameter curve. Now the next step is these x and y become inputs. Okay, so I want to combine this parameter curve, uh, wheat and sugar, how they develop together, uh, with z being the um, uh, the the bread. And the formula is okay. Let's write equal to two x two times x, right, plus, I just click on y, and I add 1, okay? Okay, so that is the dependence, ignore the negative price at the bottom, uh, so it's a negative, so it's a, it's a, it's a price of of bread as it depend, uh, depends on time, say daily for a couple of weeks in a row, this is how the price of bread ha has been changing. Whatever happened, it, at some point it just became so cheap because because the sugar is so, so cheap. They do it. Okay, uh, so if I, if I want to plot it, I can plot it like this. Um, uh, and once again, I'll just insert, insert the uh, chart. So this is the uh, the price of um, this is the price of um, uh, of bread as a function of time. Okay, so so from two functions uh, combined together, then apply the function of two variables, and uh, this is the output. They certainly the this uh, uh, the visualization only the outcome is visualized, but really this is the visualization. That what you see in the middle is the visualization of the composition with those little arrows. Uh, that help you to understand what's happening in the kind of a flow chart of, of things. Well, by the way, another example of compositions is is uh, would be um, income tax. You go through steps, and you start with your uh, income, and then you apply all kind of uh, operations to to that, and then at the end you have your your tax. Okay, so we, we don't do that anymore. But a few years ago, we have to take a piece of paper, piece of you know, like a booklet, and you have to go through, and and people would just go crazy because it's impossible to read. So now a computer is doing it. Okay, so um, so that they, these are the uh, uh, the compositions. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at um, at, at at some calculus uh, calculus of of parametric curves and calculus of of functions of the variables. Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, so uh, this is a very nice uh, com uh, composition or combination of of two main uh, uh, objects of study of calculus three, uh, for the most part, it will be in the future. It will be the only uh, complications will be there will be x y. There will be three variables or more. Okay, so uh, the, so parametric curves might be not necessarily in on the plane x y, but also they might, might be moving x y z. And then the functions will be uh, not necessarily of two variables. They might be of three variables. And then on and on, there may might be higher uh, dimensions. However, there is one more, uh, one more uh, thing that we will have to just face it later, and that is um, a functions. What if both the input and output is two numbers? So that that is what we'll have to face at some point. Uh, 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 those are vector fields. So each location. Uh, has a has a has a vector aligned to it, indicating, for example, the direction of the flow on the plate. So you have some kind of liquid, and it moves around. Uh, and at each point, you have to indicate in which direction the uh, it flows. Or alternatively, a uh, force field. So I know gravitational field. At every point in space, there is there is a direction of where how 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 far uh, how hard it is being uh, object being being um, being pulled. Okay, so we'll have to face that too. Uh, but that, I guess, pretty much all, all we have to worry about. Uh, so what kind of things we, what kind of calculus 
we, uh, uh, we can and should do with uh, these two very different entities, function uh, priority curve on the left and functions of, of two variables on the right. Uh, as you can see, we, uh, we, we have asked, we did, and we, uh, we will ask the same questions as before. So if it is a parameter curve, it's made of two functions, therefore we, each of them has a derivative. And combining those two, two derivatives will, will tell us a lot about, about, the, uh, uh, about that, uh, uh, that function. So, so, uh, so that's, that's number one, so parameter curves. Um, so say x equal f of t, y equal g of t, and then you can let's differentiate. Assuming that both of the uh, functions are uh, differentiable, then uh, you know, no trouble producing uh, uh, the two. Um, uh, the, the two functions. Uh, the, uh, well, well, first of all, the observation that I, I, I'm not sure if you, you want to uh, make, um, but as a warning, so you, they look similar. They look similar. In fact, you can't say without stretching, uh, mathematically speaking, the second one is also a parameter curve. It just doesn't doesn't make sense uh, uh, to visualize it as as uh, we visualize curves. So you can think of this one as uh, as x and y is your location of, of your your uh, u uh, or a particle moving uh, at time t. On the right is it's not a location anymore. It is uh, it is what? No, no. Think think motion. Speed. Velocity. Velocity. So remember, the speed is just the absolute value. Okay, so how fast we're moving in this one is, so far we have separately, we have a motion of, 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 of the particle with respect to x, uh, that's x prime, and motion of y uh, with respect to, uh, to y, so um, uh, with respect to time as well. So if we are looking at the uh, x, y plane, and we have a parameter curve here, uh, like this, so when we say we're moving from, from left to right, Uh, moving from left to right, uh, then uh, we we certainly interpret uh, interpret our uh, uh, um, uh, two coordinate functions, the derivative of the two coordinate functions, as the rate of change of the uh, of, of the corresponding uh, coordinates x and y. But then when they combine together, they they what they produce is the uh, uh, the the direction and the magnitude of your velocity. Okay, so so as an example. Probably a better idea to go straight with an example. X is equal, well, let, let's take the example that we had. X is equal to 1 over 1 plus t, t plus 1, and y was, uh, well, so what was it? Uh, negative uh, t plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, and then we can produce the derivatives. So, in other words, how fast the, the wheat, uh, price of wheat is changing, how fast the price of sugar is changing. Okay, time's up. Well, uh, we'll have to uh, resume next week.